Hello everybody and welcome back to Crypto Simplified. In today's video, we shall be looking at Ontology, a project that has been roaring up the coin market cap charts and there's been a bit of a pullback, but I do think that this is still a very, very interesting project. Before I get into this though, thank you all for the likes and welcome to the new subscribers. I really appreciate all the support folks and if you have any coins that you would like me to give away, do leave them in the comments. So let's get into this project then. So let's start off by actually talking about the name ontology. So what does this actually mean? It is a branch of metaphysics dealing with the nature of being. And the second definition is a set of concepts and categories in the subject area or domain that shows their properties and the relations between them. As far as names go, this is absolutely spot on because that's sort of exactly what they do. It is a project by OnChain, more on them later. It's a name that you really should know about if you're interested in cryptocurrency, especially cryptocurrency in China. They are funded by Fosun, a multinational corporation based in China, more on them later as well. So basically, OnChain is a multi-blockchain ecosystem that focuses on identity. That's identity of people, objects, data, all of that stuff. And they plan on doing this with cross-chain communication while utilizing smart contracts. But this is the kicker, folks. They're completely compliant with the Chinese government requirements. The next question you must be asking is, who is this actually for? Who is their target audience? And I have a pretty crazy answer to this. Potentially, all businesses or governments that require human object or data identification or verification. So this is a potentially global market with almost every single company potentially being a client for ontology. So in order to find out more about this, let's have a look at the current state of blockchain and cryptocurrency in China. So we have a lot of massive projects coming out of China. Lots of thinkers and innovators in this field are either Chinese or have base in China. So what we know for sure is ICOs are not allowed in China. Chinese citizens are not allowed to participate in global ICOs. There also haven't been that great times for exchanges, but these exchanges do have offices outside mainland China. NEO is still doing well regardless though. And we also do know that there are massive development plans over the next 5, 10, 15 years especially based in places like Chongqing. So this is how it looks from an outsider perspective. But in order to understand what's actually happening in China, you need to really understand the major players in the scene. And there are two. We have NEO and you have OnChain. I've taken this image from Ron C's article in Medium. I shall attach my link in the description but I just didn't think it was fair to plagiarize something that was really, really so explanatory. So it's a little messy, but I should let you know exactly what's going on in this image. So the blockchain journey in China begins in 2014 with AntShares over here on the left of your screen. So AntShares eventually rebranded to NEO and members of NEO are also members of OnChain. As a matter of fact, the leadership of OnChain and NEO are exactly the same, but they are two totally different projects. So NEO is a community-based project looking at a decentralized economy and decentralized services, but this is with the idea that more aligns with the cryptocurrency mentality, which is sort of distrust of governments. However, we do know for sure that NEO is not exactly 100% censorship proof, but they do have a platform for decentralized applications that they want businesses to integrate onto. They want the NEO platform to be a sort of framework to what's going to be going down in the future as China wants to integrate its businesses onto the blockchain. At the same time, you have OnChain founded in 2016. And these folks want to be more aligned with the business aspects of blockchain development. They are funded by a for-profit company called Fosun. And they work very closely with one of Fosun's creations, which is called DNA. DNA is a decentralized network architecture 
that has been designed by on-chain in order to have a whole bunch of cross-chain communications happening. And the point of this, the point of that government compliance is that we can have sensitive data on this platform. In other words, identification systems can be done safely and with government compliance on this on-chain DNA. This DNA ecosystem is very similar to what ontology wants to do, but it is not exactly the same thing. Well, I haven't found any information online that definitively says that ontology and DNA are the same thing. What we do know for sure right now is that DNA is the framework that is used to keep all these identity things separate, but at the same time, they can communicate between each other. So what this does is create a space where we can have verification being done without the verifying parties actually knowing the information. I shall cover more of this later. But what we have for now are two separate entities. That's what you need to know. Neo and OnChain, while run by the same people, are different. Their funding is different. Their goals are different. So, let's go into the money behind OnChain, and that is Fosun. They're currently active in three fields, three very large fields and very, very lucrative fields. So they're in healthcare. And that's a lot of research towards healthcare, as well as tourism, which they call happiness, and then wealth management and insurance. These are massive sectors that can affect almost every single person on this planet. Their website's in the description, and I did copy this quote from their website. This is from their tab, which is about unicorn companies. And that sort of shows exactly where their vision goes in terms of backing on-chain, because, I should read this out, as part of its light asset strategy, Fosun pushed forward with its unicorn strategy vigorously at the beginning of 2016. Remember, on-chain was founded in 2016. Fosun believes that in addition to internet enterprises, a batch of very competitive unicorn enterprises can be created in the wealth, health, happiness, and innovative manufacturing industries in the future by proactively integrating internet and artificial intelligence into traditional industries and by consolidating idle and cheap resources through mature products or business models. They are basically completely talking about on-chain in this paragraph without actually mentioning on chain. The use of the word unicorn should also be taken lightly because a unicorn is a company that's valued at 1 billion US dollars. So we have a vision and we have goals that are already set. And now that you know that, let's have a closer look at the problem being addressed. So the major problem we have right now are vulnerabilities in identity and social security systems. This is not unique to China. This happens everywhere in the world. If you read up about Aadhaar in India, you know that it's riddled with vulnerabilities and holes. And it's a problem. It's a widespread problem. And wherever you need to use your ID as proof, your number is taken down and people can link you to the services at all times. Employees at the services know your ID. If they want to steal your identification, they totally can. They just need to use their phone, take a photo of the front and back of your ID, and there, your identity is sort of halfway stolen. Blockchains do want to address this. They definitely do. But then comes the problem of all these blockchain-based systems want to eliminate the government entirely from their system. So they do not want any government involvement, and they are relying on the government's using a system that is decentralized, that the government has no control over, as part of key government policy. So you can see the leap of faith required over here in order for governments to actually use public systems. Governments like control. Governments issue their own currency. That is the ultimate sign of control. If you need to do anything, even build on your own property, you need government permission. The government does not want to give up control and by using modern blockchain solutions, giving up control is an essential part of that. So as a result, there aren't really that many government compliant concepts. NEO 
is not a government compliant concept per se. Of course, they're aligning themselves quite closely to the government, but they are not exactly government compliant in the same way that is ready to store sensitive data. So, the proposed solution for all this, the solution that ontology are presenting to the general public are modular, highly customizable blockchains with cross-chain functionality and a high throughput. So what this means is that identities and records can be stored on different chains. So if one chain is compromised or passes from one chain are lost, that doesn't mean that the attacker can access the entirety of the information stored on several chains. The reason why ontology would be used over NEO by the Chinese government and for identity-based things that would be very closely interlinked with government initiatives is that this is a platform that has been designed for government compliance. Personal and sensitive data will be on here, but also as a negative, censorship resistance is not a priority. Remember, this is working with the Chinese government. There is a high level of censorship in the country. And of course, in order for something to be integrated into their larger picture, censorship resistance cannot be a main facet of the offering. So what we can see is China are really laying down foundations for some immense development in the cryptocurrency space. So now that I've told you the solutions that Ontology are proposing, what makes them really, really interesting actually are the use cases. Because I told you so far that inter-blockchain interaction for identities and stuff like that. But now let's see how this works in practice. So first up, let's look at a general use case of how an ecosystem like this might look. So we have several facets, you could call them, of our world. So we have, I shall start at 12 and go around clockwise. Copyright protection, public welfare, financial services, healthcare, government administration, insurance, Internet of Things, and asset management. All of these facets of life interact with almost all the other facets of life. Almost. And all of them require some sort of identification. So by having a unified identification system that is secure, that is nothing is unhackable but as close to unhackable as the technology can permit this will enable smoother interaction between all these facets we all love complaining about how irritating it is to deal with bureaucratic systems that the government has set up but that is just a way of verifying that they're not getting bad actors into the system all this bureaucracy is needed all this slow pace of verification is just a result of people trying to game the system with fraud. So what we are proposing with ontology is we can eliminate these problems by having a unified system where things can be verified very easily. So let's look at how a normal human being might interact with these systems when it comes to dealing with government offices. So we have on the bottom parties that could be part of this ontology network. Which is just list them out for you. We've got schools, families, classmates, friends, NGOs, partners, companies, banks, and governments. So these will all, or the members within these organizations, will have identifiers. And then these individuals will have a whole bunch of different parts that will be on different chains. So for example, their unique characteristics, because fingerprint, height, weight, DNA, so all your biometric information will be on one or several blockchains. Your skills will be on a blockchain. Your needs, such as your faith, knowledge, interests, and viewpoints will be on other blockchains. Your experiences, such as education, work, and travel on another one, and your property on another. So these things will all be accessible to people requiring the verification, but they won't actually be able to see what the actual nitty-gritty of the thing is. So in order to prove that you own a house, you will need to show the address of the house as well as the bills that you've been paying which have been addressed to you. Officers will then look at these verification documents and then ascertain that yes, you do own the house or you do stay in this house. With this system, they can just skip employees looking at your personal information and they will just be given, this is true, 
this person owns the house because you've done the verification through the other blockchains. So in essence, this keeps your data much more private while letting less eyes, may that be a computer's eyes or a person's eyes, look at what actually makes this information true or verified. The same can be done with objects. Everyone is really optimistic about the Internet of Things. And now with the new possibilities of computers that are as small as a grain of salt, you can potentially put computers on everything. As a result, security on these computers will be a massive problem, as well as information that can be ascertained by what these computers are connected to. So, as a result, we need to separate this information while ensuring that it can still communicate with each other. So what we have, as an example, on this, starting again on the bottom, the ontology network, and then you have this object on the network. As a result of it being on the network, you know its tangible characteristics, as well as relationships, such as relationships with the people who own it or who use it, the relationship with other goods, such as stocks and inventory, as well as the relationship with money. So its price, as well as its rent or other numbers that would go alongside its money related characteristics so potentially you have a ton a ton of data on every single object that would be on an internet of things platform in order to make this work you would need a very high throughput on a blockchain which is exactly what ontology are promising so in order to make the system work you need the tools and ontology is providing all those tools so what you can do as a business owner is approach ontology and then get your stock inventory, your business practices or whatever you want to do on the system because the architecture of the system is already done. Companies don't need to build up a project from the ground. They just need to focus on what they do as a company and then integrate what they have onto the ontology platform. Yes, data input might potentially take a very, very long time, but luckily, that's all that they need to focus their time on, the data input. They don't need to build up the system themselves. So let's show you a real world example. And this is something that I'm sure all of us would go through at some point and all of us would have a problem or issue with. But this is something that can definitely be streamlined by a system like ontology. We're talking about medicine and going to the doctor or a hospital or a pharmacy. So now that we have unified ontology IDs, for people, pharmacies, hospitals, and the doctors themselves. It's very, very easy to verify information while not giving sensitive information to people who may not necessarily need it beyond the verification stage. So have a look at this. You can pause the video now if you like and just study the relationships between the different parties on this. So I'll give you a second to pause that. You can pause this and resume when you're done. I'll go on to the next slide where we talk about the token itself. So here we have the ontology token, ONT is its ticker name, but we also have ONG, which will come out later. This will work very, very similar to NEO and NEO gas. So it is an NEP5 utility and government's token, exactly like NEO. It's stored in a wallet that will probably look a lot like the NEON wallet. The consensus system is exactly like NEO, which is the practical Byzantine fault tolerance consensus. And just like NEO, you will be staking ONT in your wallet. ONT is currently the token that everyone has. And you will get rewarded in ONG for staking. We still do not know what sort of rewards you'll receive yet. The main net will be launching very soon, more on that later. And as we get closer to that, we will find out more information about the ONG rewards. In terms of the community on this platform, we do have lots of places where you can get more information. The subreddit R Ontology Network is very, very active. Lots of news on there as well as trading speculation and stuff like that. So it's a great place to be if you want to be in the loop. Twitter is for announcements, but I would recommend that you check out their medium. There are a lot of long form explainers on there. And since this is a fairly in-depth sort of project that they hope for world domination with this, it will really help to look at their vision from Medium. Their GitHub page will be launching in the next couple of days. And Telegram 
is fairly active and you can ask any questions of the team there and you will get responses. In terms of how the public sees this project, is fairly optimistic because KPMG has listed OnChain as one of the top 50 fintech companies in China. This award ceremony happened in December last year and people are optimistic about what they can actually do. However, being just in the top 50 in China, I would like to see some more global recognition here, especially with the goals that they've set themselves. They have very recently been listed on exchanges. So as a result, there will be a lot of interest right now. So and you can see that in the price, like 50% increase in a single day is great. It's not unusual in crypto, but it's something that has definitely garnered a lot of attention. So interest is very high right now. And that corresponds to the price as well as the trading volume. More on that later. So who are their competitors then? Basically everyone. Ontology are going to fight everyone in becoming the enterprise ready blockchain project. So you have lots of competitors like Dragoncoin, Neblio. I've spoken about plenty on this channel. But Ontology has goals of wiping the floor with their competition. And with the backing of the Chinese government, it might be a lot easier for them than it is for their other competitors. So what's their roadmap looking like? Like I said, the GitHub launch will be happening tomorrow. So you can get a lot of access to their open source code through their main net launch is happening soon. And you could attribute that to the recent price increase. But in terms of other dates, we don't have too much information to currently work with. In terms of the numbers, things are looking great. They've been shooting up coin market cap ranks. And now they find themselves at number 29. They were, of course, higher yesterday, but we've had a slight pullback. So this is the updated information as of the 29th of March 2018. I have put the market cap in red because for me, the market cap is too high right now to bother investing. I will wait for a further pullback, but more on that when I talk about my entry and exit points. Remember, we are in a bear market and a 491 million market cap is pretty high considering that there are lots of projects that have been live for much longer that have a lower market cap. So where would you buy yourself some ONT? The volume is currently on Binance and Huobi, but they have recently been added to the KuCoin list of assets. I am a big fan of KuCoin and I find that prices are often a little lower than Binance. So I'll give it some time. I'm not going to buy right now either way. So I'm expecting the price to drop a little bit before things actually really take off with the bull run that people are expecting to happen in May. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This video is just informational. So having given you all the info, let me just run through a summary of what I like about this project, what I dislike about the project before I talk about my entry and exit points. So there are a lot of positives here and I've highlighted two of them because I think they are incredible positives. The combination of a really phenomenal use case alongside approval by a government that's only going to go from strength to strength over the next few years is an unmissable positive. The company is promising a high level of scalability as well as easy enterprise integration with minimal expertise. And I think these three factors are really going to play a massive part in adoption. I haven't spoken much about the team, but you can find out their information on the website. They don't have LinkedIn pages, but they do have a fairly solid backing. And let's not forget that the leadership of Ontology is the same as the leadership for NEO. And these guys have really been killing it recently. So in terms of track record, I think these folks have what it takes to really challenge the top dogs in the crypto space. In terms of the neutral aspects of this project, in terms of competition, I don't think any company in this space has the sort of backing that these guys do, especially in the enterprise blockchain space. They are backed by on one side, a multinational company and in terms of policy, they're backed by the government. So I don't really think anyone's going to stand a chance. So I put this as a neutral because the competition isn't really going to be pushing them further to really, you know, stretch the boundaries of what can be done. I also think that token is a fairly neutral thing because yes, we are seeing this model in a lot of places and it's used as a governance token rather than as a currency. 
I think is fairly useful, but at the end of the day, it's just a security. So, mm, I'm not super excited about the use of the token, but I don't think it's a negative either. And finally, regarding the negatives, the lack of censorship resistance for me is a huge stumbling block. I believe in the freedom of information. I believe in the immutability of blockchain-based information. And since it isn't really happening here, it's a massive con, but it's not so big a con that I will not invest in this because they do have the potential for integration that a lot of other companies do not. Another huge negative is the massive market cap in bearish times. A lot of very good projects have lost a lot of their market share. And I do think that a huge part of the rising ontology price is to do with FOMO. A lot of people are FOMOing in and now a lot of people have lost their money because they bought at the peak. This is what happens right now and I'm going to wait for a much bigger pullback. I don't normally invest in companies that have a higher than 300 million USD market cap and currently these guys are way above that. I do think that there is a possibility that they drop lower down especially when this market flips. Once we have a massive bull run a lot of the companies that have been gaining a lot right now may not be so lucky. I do think that a lot of the projects that are here to stay have had retracements and I do think that these guys are here to stay as well but I do not know how far this slide is going to go. No one knows how far this slide is going to go and I'd rather wait for some consolidation before I consider dipping my feet into this market. Let's talk about the entry and exit points then. What have we got here? So this chart is really, really small. It's tiny and that's because this is a very recent listing. Recent listings mean high volatility. And currently we are at around 27,000 Satoshi. Can this drop further? I do think it can. And I'm not even going to look at this for a purchase unless it hits the 21,500 Satoshi mark. That's where I put my purple line. We can speculate about the current price movement and there are two very valid suggestions that could be floating around right now. Is this price increase a result of anticipation for the mainnet release? Is it FOMO? Is it just people trying to punt? No one really knows. We might find out a little bit more about that later. And then is this pullback a result of people selling and cashing in profits before this mainnet launch happens? We do not know just yet. No one knows. So I'm going to try and play it safe by following my working over here. I want consolidation. Once this asset consolidates just a little bit, will I be more comfortable getting involved? I will wait a little bit. And when I do buy, I will buy to HODL. I want a multiplier on this investment. I don't want just a percentage gain. But that's just me. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice, folks. So having said that, this is it. That's my video. I hope you liked what you saw. Do leave a like if you did, and do leave me some constructive criticism if you didn't. I look forward to catching up with you folks again. This is Mar from Crypto Simplified, signing off. You take care, and we will see each other very, very soon. Later.